San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMworld and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from VMworld 2015 here at Moscone North in San Francisco. I'm Stu Miniman and my co-host for this segment is Brian Gracely and uh, very happy to welcome back, welcome back uh, Charles Fan, who's the SVP and general manager for uh, the storage group inside of VMware. Charles, you were on yesterday, uh, new to theCUBE, I think, the first time, so uh, you're a seasoned pro at this point. Welcome back. <laughs> Look forward to uh, talking about storage at VMware. Yeah, so uh, it, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, you know, Brian and I both worked with VMware for many years, yep. and you know, storage was one of those things that you know, was hugely important always to the ecosystem, but VMware's role has really changed over the last few years. Uh, you know, so let, let, let's dive right into it. First, uh, can, can you just, for our audience, give us kind of your journey inside VMware, and, and the appointment sure. as GM is, is relatively new. So. Sure, sure. So I've been with VMware for six years, and uh, I just took over the uh, storage business unit six months ago, so I'm six months into my job. Before that, I was leading the R&D side of storage, and before that, I was doing the uh, application platform. And before VMware, I worked for EMC. Hmm. Uh, I was a co-founder of Ringfinity, which EMC acquired back in 2005. I, I, actually, yeah. we, we, can, we can talk and, and share notes on that. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very familiar with that through the EMC select process and then yep. The, uh, yep. uh, the acquisition that, that happened there. So uh, for, for our audience, can you kind of walk through, you know, what's the scope of your organization, how many people you have, what sure. products fall under your domain? Sure, so storage business unit is part of SDDC division certainly central to the company strategy. I have about 550 people. Now 90% of them are engineers, but I also own product management, product marketing, and technical marketing, you know, whatever makes the product successful. All right. And, hey, Charles, uh, quick question. Yes. How many hardware engineers do you have working for you? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> One, actually. We are actually looking for an architect who will understand hardware so that uh, our software would work better on them. Uh, but in terms of the, uh, the actual engineering work, it's all software engineering. All right, and, and uh, what, what are the products that fall in, in, in the suite? Sure, so um, you know, obviously Virtual Sand is a uh, big product for us, and, uh, um, and Virtual Volume is a sort of the uh, yin and yang of our software-defined storage. One is for server storage, the other is for external arrays, and both of them support a policy-based storage management uh, platform, so there's a vSAN, Vivol, as well as SPVM. Now, I also own the availability, SRM uh, product line, vSphere replication, as well as the uh, core storage stack. So all the VMFS, uh, vSCSI, all the vSphere storage goodies that you're familiar with, that's part of my team as well. Yeah, so I, I, I'm curious, how would you, what's the elevator pitch for uh, you know, VMware's role in the storage ecosystem today? So obviously storage is an integral part of a data center. And our view is the entire data center is going through a transformation. It's going through the uh, self-realization and virtualization of the data center that includes compute, storage, networking, and management. So storage is a one of the four pillars of SDDC, and we would like to be a catalyst of this transformation of data center. Yeah, so you know, people look at VMworld, and I, I think somebody did an analysis and said more than half of the vendors that are here right. from the partner ecosystem are either a storage company or storage is a major piece of what they're here. Um, how's that relationship? You know, it, it, it has changed over the last couple of years, and uh, how, how do you look at that? Sure, so we are very proud of the broadest storage ecosystem in the industry today. Uh, we have uh, uh, dozens, and if not hundreds, of storage partners. Uh, as well as data protection availability partners, and it's great to see them on the show floor. Um, I think the number of uh, the vendors, especially startups, on the expo floor is also an indication of the transformation that's taking place in the storage market. So it's a happening place. It's been a relatively stable market for the last 20 years, but I think now it is being disrupted. It is uh, a, a number of uh, tectonic shifts are taking place, <coughs> and as a result, you see all these startups coming up, introducing new storage models to the customers. Yeah, as, as much as you can, we're seeing more and more uh, storage companies who have either gone IPO or thinking about going IPO, so we're getting a sense of not only their number of customers, but their revenue. As much as you can talk about it, 
where is vSAN in terms of, of either number of customers or revenues, and, and you know, how do you stack up against some of these startups in terms of, of breadth? Sure, sure. So virtual SAN is a hyper-converged storage solution, and we have announced in the short 17 months it's been sold, we have over 2,000 customers. We believe of all the hyper-converged solutions out there today, we have the most customers. And not only we have the most customers, but we also believe we are the most widely deployed in terms of number of units. So there are certainly other good alternatives, uh, but, uh, and they have been doing it for longer. So certainly credit to them for pioneering this market. But when you look at market today in the last 12 months, vSAN has uh, been deployed in more servers than any other solution. Yes, today. so I, I have to comment on this just because okay. Wikibon focuses on this a lot, has done quite yeah. a, a bit of research on it. So what, one of the challenges you have is comparing an appliance where I've got the yeah. full stack in there. Um, basically vSphere is probably the only thing, let, right. you know, Say Nutanix, right. you know that they, they're not selling the the uh, uh, the vSAN piece, uh, the, the uh, VMware piece itself, but the rest of that stack is all sold by Nutanix. Comparing that against a software-only solution like yourself or Maxta, it's tough to do apples to apples. So you right. know, units is kind of tough. We actually, in our numbers, uh, we had from a revenue standpoint, based on on our understanding, you know, you're, you're at least a top five player, maybe even as high as number two or three, mm -hmm. um, from a revenue standpoint. But you know, you're working right. through a partner ecosystem. You're going through right. you know, many different deployment uh, options out there. Sure, so uh, certainly there are different ways of measuring uh, market share. Um, dollars is one way, where we just sell the vSAN software dollar part of it. And compared to a full system, usually the, 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 the dollars customer pay for vSAN is between one-fifth to one-eighth of what they pay to a full hyper-converged appliance. When you measure units, we actually not only look at units that we sold, but actually looking at the units we have deployed based on the customer surveys that we have done. So in terms of the actual units that we believe we are leading the market with, with the dollars, we are not, as yeah. you mentioned. Uh, that's a okay. fair statement. Yeah. So, uh, you know, product's gone through you know, rapid growth. Uh, we, we've had some of your people yeah. talk about, uh, about it. So can you, you just give us, uh, you know, encapsulate the, the storage announcement for this week at VMworld? Sure, so we announced vSAN 6.1, which is the third release of vSAN and it's going to be available this month. We also announced a beta of the next version, uh, and that's going to be introducing uh, data dedupe, uh, erasure coding, as well as software checksum features. Um, the main features for 6.1 is stretch clustering, as well as improved vSphere replication, uh, going down to five minutes of RPO. We also supported a new robo, two node robo deployment scenarios, as well as additional hardware choices with NVMe and UltraDim. Yeah. <clears throat> so when, when vSAN was first announced, I mean, we went through this sort of flurry of announcements. It right. was eight node, and two weeks later it was 16 node, and another week later it was 32. Realistically, wh wh where's a good fit for vSAN? Where, right. do you, where do your customers sweet spot it? Where are they starting to push the boundaries? That's a great question. So from a technology point of view, underlying uh, vSAN is a distributed object storage system. It's very scalable, not really limited by any numbers. The reason for the actual limit on the number of nodes in a cluster is the reason we believe to do a really good hyper-converged solution, you want to have a single, a single control plane with the actual hypervisor you're using. So there are actually no such thing as a vSAN cluster. It's just a vSphere cluster. Mm -hmm. So the reason we were 32 in V1 or version 5.5 and 64 now is because vSphere cluster size increased from 32 to 64. So in some ways, we are a native storage capability to a vSphere cluster uh, that delivering the storage functionalities. Yeah. So you will see that we continue to scale as a vSphere cluster uh, scales. Yeah, so, uh, you know, talked to a number of users, yeah. uh, including a couple this week uh, on theCUBE for vSAN. Uh, scalability hasn't been a concern. It tends to be a yeah. much smaller uh, number of nodes starting out. Yeah. I mean, everybody, yeah. I, I start with three and, you know, maybe six to eight seems to be about the sweet spot that, yeah. that, that I'm hearing. Um, I guess a question I get all the time is, where doesn't a, a solution like vSAN, or in your opinion, kind of hyper-converged fit in today's market? We saw the journey with virtualization, uh, right. and you know, there, there's always that, that starting point in growth of the market. So our motto is to go wherever vSphere goes. Uh, so it's a very horizontal use case, as long as it's a vSphere environment. Clearly, we do not address the other hypervisors today, so that would be one limitation as you're looking at vSAN as a solution. But as far as vSphere goes, 
our 2,000 customers span from the smallest customers to your largest customers, and it across multiple industries and across multiple use cases. In this customer survey that we got, one surprise is the number one use case is actually mission-critical production apps. You know, because we just started supporting it this year, it's already becoming the number one uh, deployment scenario where over 60% of customers are using vSAN for uh, mission-critical uh, production apps. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny you say that because I think one of the biggest challenges for a lot of startups is, you know, don't use it over here. We haven't finished right. testing it and everything. Um, are you a little worried about that? Some of the customers getting a little over their skis with some of what they're doing? Uh, anything you're, you know, how do, how do you help customers from not hurting themselves? Sure, so this is the third release of vSAN. You know, when we released version one, we said we support VDI, we support Robo, we support test dev. And to our surprises, some customer already went ahead and put it into production. So we were like, oh, uh, we need to keep a close eye. But it turned out the product is, in the VMware tradition, it just works. Uh, it's a software that's more reliable than hardware. Um, and we were pleasantly surprised the uh, lack of the uh, issues that they showed up in the field. We continue making improvement with the second and third version in both the robustness and the performance of the product. So now we are actually very confident to stand behind the product for really the tier one mission critical workload. Interesting, so uh, you, you talked a little bit about VVOLs at the beginning. Can you, yeah. can you help explain for us, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, my understanding is, you know, you, you couldn't have vSAN if it wasn't for VVOLs, but, yeah. you know, compare contrast VVOLs for like a vSAN versus right. VVOLs for uh, the kind of the traditional storage array. Sure. In my mind, it's a triangle. Um, on the base, you have vSAN and vVol. On the top, what you have is SPBM, Storage Policy-Based Management. So one is for server storage, one is for external storage. And between vSAN and vVol, you enable a single automation methodology through policies. You can automate the storage provisioning and management, whether it's delivered from servers or external storage. You, uh, you you know, we've heard a lot this week. We've had an entire track about DevOps. Uh, we saw a lot of announcements about containers this week from, from mm -hmm. Kit Colbert. Uh, you know, Pat talked about how new applications are changing. And what's the, what's the sort of cloud-native modern application story for, for VMware storage? Things like object storage and, and some of the other you know, different non-block storage that's out there. Yeah, I actually read a Wikibon report. And I think that report is very helpful to showing the world is changing from the traditional storage architecture to a server-based architecture, and there is both the uh, performance tier and capacity tier. We believe much of the capacity tier will be delivered from the cloud, from the more hyperscale solutions, where much of the performance tier will be delivered by hyper-converged solutions like Virtual Set. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, well, uh, you, you know, that, that's <laughs> thank you for uh, you know yeah. me mentioning in the report there. Um, talk a little bit about how your team works on kind of the, the packaging and the solutions, the interoperability. Um, is that inside your team? Is that outside? You know, what, what kind of feedback are you, are you getting from uh, the, the partners that are doing things like vSAN ReadyNode, Evo, yeah. uh, and the like? Yeah, so storage ecosystem continues to be a great asset of VMware, as well as for the storage group. For example, with virtual volume, we have 29 partners who have signed up to support this model of managing storage. For Virtual SAN, we are working very closely with our ecosystem partners in terms of uh, qualifying ready nodes. We have over 90 ready nodes available from all the familiar names, the server vendors you are getting um, your servers from. We also support hundreds of hard drives, hundreds of SSDs that you can use for your uh, vSAN product. We also work very closely with the software providers, whether you're delivering data protection solutions, data archiving solutions, copy data management, <coughs> such as Catalogic, as well as other uh, the copy data management solutions that we are working with today. So we were very proud of the uh, ecosystem partners that we have created. We'll continue working very closely with them for both VVOL and vSAN in delivering this w new world of self-defined storage to our customers. Okay, so uh, I'm wondering a little more detail on kind of from, from the go-to-market standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, you've got a few different options. Um, is it, you know, let them all fly and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see what, what, what sticks. Uh, you know, what, what have you seen over the last kind of 18 months and, uh, uh, you know, what learnings do you have going forward? What we are seeing a lot of traction is with vSAN ReadyNode for the vSAN product. Now, obviously, vSAN is a software product that have multiple ways of consumption. 
you can consume it as appliance through Evo Rail. You can consume it through a software, either on a ready node or on uh, components that you assemble yourself. The fastest traction so far are the ready nodes because that gives the best balance, maybe not the best balance, gives the most balance between flexibility in terms of server choices our customer have and the ease of use where ready node is pre-configured for you. So we're definitely seeing the largest number of our deployments happening on top of the vSAN ready nodes. Yeah, one of the big things a lot of our clients will come, will come and ask us about is, they'll say, look, how fast is this trend happening from disk-based to hybrid, sort of a mix of flash and disk to all flash? You guys obviously are software, you can yeah. run it any What are you seeing, what trends are you seeing, what, what market you know, differentiations are you seeing from a vSAN perspective? So flash, I believe, is one of the three major trends happening in the storage market today. Uh, it's flash as well as the newer solid state uh, storage, such as 3D Crosspoint we're seeing from Intel and Micron, both are great partners of ours. And uh, the other two trends, I believe, are the hyper-converged model and the hyperscale cloud delivered model. So between those three things, we think that that's kind of changing the landscape of the storage yeah. technology. Are, are you able to estimate how much of your installed base is, is hybrid versus all flash or, or all disk? So we just announced the Flash uh, model earlier this year with our version 6.0. Right now, we still have more customers deploying in a hybrid configuration uh, than the all-flash configuration. But we definitely see the highest growth happening with the all-flash configuration. Yeah, so Charles, you brought up one of the big trends is, is cloud. I'm, I'm curious, how much interaction is there between what you're doing in the storage team, what's happening with vCloud Air, uh, similarity of management, uh, should we think of? Does vSAN fit into that hybrid cloud discussion? Yes, that's a great question. I'm sure you saw the keynote on Monday, and you saw Yenbing up there. Mm -hmm. um, Yenbing actually both work for me as part of the storage division, storage business unit, and works for Bill Fathers as part of vCloud Air. And she's the one who delivered the object storage services for vCloud Air, as well as the one leading all my engineering team delivering vSAN. So we have close collaboration between the cloud division and the SDDC division, and making sure our storage solutions work with each other perfectly. And in our vSAN design center, you will see more features, how we take advantage of the cloud storage as a capacity tier, as an archival tier uh, for vSAN. All right, so, so Charles, uh, the last question I have for you is to tell us a little bit about your team. You know, when you, when you kind of, you yeah. know, look at VMware, you know, what, what's, the, what's the storage group like? Uh, you know, what, what do you look for when you're hiring? Uh, and, uh, you know, just give us a little bit of insight as to, you know, the, 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 that makeup. Sure, so VMware is known for the quality of its engineers. Yeah. And it's a privilege for me to be part of this team. I was working at a startup uh, acquired by EMC 10 years ago. I never left the EMC Federation. And I think the single most important reason are the people that I work with, the engineers, the leadership, and it's a true privilege to be continue working at VMware and leading the charge of software-defined storage as this whole market is being turned upside down. Yeah. Well, you know, so definitely in a you know an area that everybody's watching, Charles. I yeah. really appreciate you sharing uh, what what's going on in the storage business unit at VMware, uh, and we will be right back with more coverage here from VMworld 2015. Thanks for watching. Thank you.